Carl, in, in, in the last Nations Cup campaign, um, the team had a certain look uh, in their eyes, the players, the, the coaching staff, everybody. Do you see that this time around? Uh, Earl, yes, I, I know exactly what you mean. In, in the last campaign, you know, we were bouncing around. We were, um, everybody was up for it. Yeah, we, we have a little bit of a different staff that's going on. Um, but, you know, I, I could feel it coming back. You know, and hopefully we, we can time it at the right time. Um, you know, Maurice is not here with us. Ray is due to come in today. Um, we have Sukhoi with us, who's part of the, the coaching academy. We have Shaquille Trot. So we have different faces that that are here with us. Um, so the, the atmosphere is not quite the same, but we... We are all still striving for the for the same, you know, sort of results, and it, it the process is a little bit different this time. The fact that uh, if you're successful on Friday, and then moving to face the winners uh, of the of the other match um, in sh such a short space of time, and then if you're successful there, having to to kind of get to Dallas to play in the actual Gold Cup. So many games in a short space of time. Is it any concern on the staff of how you manage the first two games in the qualifiers, or do you have to kind of go all out in the in the qualifiers to make that, and then worry about the the Gold Cup itself afterwards? Yeah, I, I think for us, we have to go all out um, to try and make it. You know, um, we can't leave nothing nothing behind. We have to go all out to try and make it because if, if we lose, we're out. Um, so we have to go all in. Um, and, and and that means, you know, it, in, in football, you can go a girl behind, but in in the sense of what we want from the players is to give everything that, that they got, you know, don't hold anything back. You know, that's, that's the mentality that we have to have going into to the first fixer. And that's, Right now, we only have one game, and that's Barbados, and and that's the game that we need to win. It's a big, it's a big fixer for us. We all know that COVID has played a major part in our preparations leading up to this. Um, are there any concerns with this squad right now, going into with only a few days left to that match against Barbados? Uh, no, not as far as COVID. We we, we seem to be good on that. That side, we have fingers crossed, and we hope that it's, everything stays, you know, the way it is at this present moment, and everyone's available. Um, so, yeah, on that side, everything everything is fine. Now, as a coach, how much pressure are you feeling on yourself um, going into this game? Because obviously, um, you're you're kind of the leader of of the group, and a lot of people look to you to to lead. Bermuda to the next to the next phase of this Gold Cup. So, how much pressure do you feel right now in the lead up to this first knockout? Because it is a knockout. Um, it's always pressure. You know, I I I like to win. I want to win. I've always said that I want to win in in whatever I'm doing. Um, you know, but sometimes you have to look at it. And if your team gives you all that they have, then you know, you have to accept the results sometimes and you can't, um, you know, be too harsh on, 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 on things. Because I know when you're on the outside, people on the outside looking in, it's all about the result. But it, it's a process as well for for any team to go through. You know, it's fine lines. Rather the ball goes in the net or it goes <laughs> wider than that. You know, you could play well and... And um, and lose, you could play bad and win. That that's just the way the game goes. Right now, I'll take playing bad and win. You know, you could because you could play well. Yesterday we played fairly well and, and lost the game, and so, you know, that's the way football goes. Now, there's been no secret. Barbados has has uh, of late had a few imports allowed into their team. Uh, anybody of concern for you that that uh, you know of that has been introduced to this team? 
Yeah, I know they're, they're brought in a couple of forwards that, um, you know, got a pedigree. One, I think one plays in Israel and there's one that's played for uh, Barbados that plays in England. I think he's played for Swindon and he's, he's played for Carlisle. He's played for a few few clubs in England. It's a goal scorer. Um, but I look at defensively, um, they, I think they have one or two that's played in England as well. But um, but watch them defensively, and I don't think they're, they're going to improve a great deal in that area. But one thing that they have I've seen from the games that I've watched is that they have a lot of heart and determination and they're prepared to stay in games and and – and stick it in and and go to the end. So, you know, they they're prepared to dig in, and and that's that's what we've been saying to the players there, that they're prepared to dig in. That they're not worried if it's um, not that fancy for them. They will chase lost courses. They will do the hard yards. Um, so, you know, that's we know what to expect in that in that area. I think with with the quality that we have going forward, we get it right on the day. I think we'll score a few goals, but we have to get it right on the day. Sam? I'm okay, I've, 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 asked, I've asked my ones, I'm good. Okay. Um, well, Kyle, when you look at, um, I heard you say, uh, you know, you've been toying with the 4-4-2. What, with, with the way our team plays, what is the, what is the strength of having to play four four two as opposed to playing uh, two wide players. Well, one of the strengths when you play, you occupy their center halves. Right now, center halves are used to playing with the one up top, and and when you put the two up there, it just causes them a little bit of a of a problem. A little bit, you know, you got different guys running at them, um, you know, taking turns and and at running at them, one going in behind, one coming short. Um, you know, just that it's a different variation for them. Whereas, you know, the, playing up up front on your own is not is not easy all the time. You know, sometimes you can do it with a partner, but we may be forsaking a little bit of um, possession in the center of midfield when you do that. You know, because we're we're trying to go to more of a possession. Uh, team than we were maybe, you know, three or four years ago. And that's why we play with the, the the extra midfielder. But that's something, like I said, we have been thinking about, but it, it's, it's an option, you know, that we have, you know, according to the way the game's going. One of the things I've noticed over the years of McKee scoring quite a few goals especially early in his career, he played uh, off of a, a big striker. Um, and he was able to uh, get those flick ones or even just the close quarters. Uh, was that, is that also an option um, that you're thinking of playing that system as well? Yes. You know, so it, it depends on the game, how, how it's good. Um, you know, we like to play with high starting positions and try and, uh, force teams back. So, I mean, yeah, that that's that's something that we will look at as well. You know, according to the way the game's going, if 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 it's not going in our favor, we have to change our how we're playing to try and make it go in our favor. How much time have you worked on the set pieces? Because um, a lot of the goals that have been scored of late have been coming from those set pieces, i.e., corners free kicks in and around the box and those things. Yeah, when we look at the, the Canada game that we conceded, the first goal was from a, a set piece. Um, and I think it was a set piece that they scored against. Yeah, we're letting in a few set pieces. And we're done fairly well for about 18 months or, or longer without conceding a goal. I think the last goal that we conceded from a set piece was against uh, Costa Rica. It was a little bit of a rebound, and they scored. So we were pretty pleased with our record with that. But it's something that we have to be first to the ball, be first and second to the ball. And 
you know, we've gone over some corners. Um, we need to, to go over it again. And and offensively, we've been dangerous from them as well. So, you know, both sides, those are the, those, that could win you a game or lose you a game. Yeah. Well, Nikki, yeah. um, back in the helm of, of leading Bermuda, not only not only as the captain, but as, as the, the front man, um, how, how have the guys kind of rallied this time around in your eyes? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously being with the squad for a short period of time, um, building up to this 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 run, I think it's been a very good preparation, as good as we could have made it, um, in my opinion, and we, the continuity amongst us, obviously going along with every all the COVID restrictions and, and, and things that we have to abide by. I think we've we've come together very well. I think we have a very competitive squad. I think I don't think anyone could pick the squad right now. And I think that's always a very a very good um problem for the manager to have. So I have to I have to consider it a very a very good place to be in at the moment as as a skipper and as a a, a marquee player in the squad. Now you guys seem to gel quite a bit as 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 a family of sorts. Uh, or you guys are kind of around the same age. Most of you are around the same age, grew up playing together and so forth. How much of that helps when it's game time? Yeah, it it, it definitely helps. I, I don't think I don't think any international country can kind of emulate what we have as a nation. Um, uh, you know. <sighs> It could be groups of five or six that that know each other, you know, know the in, individuals inside out. Grew up, played primary school, middle school, high school, club football, all the way up until this stage. And when you have when you have the, you know, that understanding of each other, I think it's easy to go to war. Easy to go to war together. Um, you know, I've been playing with Reg since I was ten years old. I've been playing with Dante Laverick since I was ten years old. Playing with Roger Lee since I was about 14 years old amongst the national team. And I can go on and go on. Lee Jean since he was 17. And you get to know people, you know, people on and off the field. You know, we have people that are uh, family members, godfathers, best friends. And you don't get that in any other nation. And that's something that we have to bring, um, bring to the pitch in terms of our willingness to fight for each other, our willingness to to do what it takes for each other, because it is like a family. You know, Bermuda is a very small place, and that's and that's what it is like for us. So we have that advantage of a plenty of nations, and and we have to take that continuity and the togetherness, and 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 try and let it mesh well with with what we plan to do. Mm. No, never a secret about Bermuda football. When we go to go down, we tend to kind of drop our heads and all that. As the leader, how do you plan to, if that happens, to make sure that the guys kind of stay in it, especially on the field? Yeah, it's you know, it, it, at every level, um, I've, I've played at it, it. It tends to have its impact on the team to concede a goal. Some teams are better than others. Some teams are more experienced at dealing with it and overcoming adversity and coming from behind. I think it shows what character risks you are as as individuals and. There's 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 no reason to say that that we can cannot go three goals down and win four three or win an extra time. So if we really want to go through this tie, we have to understand that we could go behind. But it's about what we show, what we show from from that point on to to overcome the adversity and come from behind. It's never easy, but it's a mental it's a mental uh, barrier that you have to overcome and 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 find a way to shift the gears from. Um, you know, maybe being at 80% or 90% to, to trying to go to 100 and beyond. And all I can do is try and relay that information on, lead by example, and encourage, continue to encourage and encourage our players not to concede a goal. But the, the realities are that's probably going to happen and we just have to overcome that and believe that would be better side, whether that's winning 1-0 or... Um, one second, just want to close that. this out. One nil or, or, or winning four three. Um, it's it's about winning, and it don't matter how in the in the in the sake. Yeah. Now I asked Kyle this question because I remember being around you guys during the last campaign, and you guys had that look in your eye. 
Do you see that in the players that you're looking at today? Is that hunger? Is that that determination? Can that is that all there right now? I think it will be easier to tell if it's there when we really get down and 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 we really get in and amongst the pre preparation for the game. It's hard to tell. I think training has been fantastic. I think we've we've had enough practice game experience amongst ourselves. We would have liked to have more experience against our positions prior to this. You know, we we had a participation and a fixture against an opposition yesterday. So that was, you know, it was plenty of positives to take from that. Um, you know, not all positive, but plenty of positives to take from that. And I think over the next 48 to 72 hours, I think it will start to show. Um, and we, you know, we we know what it we know what it takes to get to the Gold Cup. We've experienced it before. It's just a different format. And the plans to, to go out there and execute like we did before.